What's up, boss? Captain. What's up, dude? Oh, no, not oh my god, look at Get jammed on, baby. Get jammed on, bitches. <laughs> Are you live right now? No, I'm just recording. Yeah, we can say whatever we want. I just cut it out later. True. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't say that. Can't say that. On the heels of having been able to, well, help absolutely obliterate a Hummer back in November, Just a few short months later, I got another invite to join Matt Carricker of Demolition Ranch, Donut Operator, Brandon Herrera, and the folks at Bunker Branding to once again head over to Matt's property at the Desperado Resort outside of San Antonio, Texas, to check out the many, many sizes and shapes and flavors of Freedom Seed distribution devices that were able to migrate there that day. Oh, there's a problem. Tire's flat. And oh, what an adventure we had. See, the last time I made the trip out to the last range day, I had to spend half of it on a couch with the worst strep infection I've ever had in my life. No lie. I got sick. I started getting a sore throat about five or six days ago. I ended up having to go to urgent care first thing in the morning. I have a really aggressive strep infection. I have strep throat. I have a pharmacy worth of drugs on the counter and started taking a really aggressive antibiotic. Oh, and I got a steroid shot in my ass cheek to uh, hopefully knock this thing out by the time I have to get on a plane tomorrow afternoon. It took me literally two months to recover from it. The bacterial infection ended up leading way to a viral pneumonia. It, whatever, none of that matters. We're here to talk about the here and now. The point is, there were a lot of people at the last one I didn't get to talk to. So this time, I wanted to make sure we got around and said hi to some folks and gotta get some really cool footage. Thus began my trip to the beautiful city of San Antonio. Day one was primarily flying into Texas. Since I reside in a tier two city, that meant layovers. So after about three hours of sleep the night before and a hop between one city to the next, I finally arrived. Random dude rapping about putting his balls in somebody's tonsils while he was taking a piss and then started singing random Christmas carols. Definitely arrived in Texas. Thanks to the power of Airbnb, I ended up getting a spot basically in the center of downtown, right next to the Bear County Courthouse. Quick note, uh, Bear County is spelled B E-X-A-R, which I found out while I was there. Uh, I was trying to call it Bexar like an absolute noob. It is bear. Go figure. Anyway, my spot was right next to this courthouse, which is an iconic building made of layers of red sandstone and Texas granite, which was further accented by facing the San Fernando Cathedral, a nearly 300-year-old Catholic church in the heart of the city. And my stupid one-bedroom Airbnb got to face the courtyard for both of them. It was crazy. So cool. And honestly, I've used Airbnb for a while, and this was easily the luckiest find I've gotten yet. Really, really cool spot. We were supposed to meet with a lot of the guys that were going to be at the gun range. We we're going to meet at this bar in the north of the city. But okay, so uh, at the place where I'm staying, um, found out that my boy Andy Sizik, who is the lead singer of Macari and Monuments, just drives me. is playing a show in San Antonio tonight. So I'm gonna go to that. Should be good times. The boys were playing with intervals and Hail the Sun in San Antonio that night. If you could get out to see any of these bands, you should. It is well worth the ticket price. Intervals is an instrumental only band that sounds, every song that they write sounds like boss music, like final boss music in a video game. It's amazing. And they don't miss a note when they're live. It's so sick. Uh, in Hail the Sun, they've been around for the better part of a decade. They're out of California. They make just really great music. Um, they they kind of remind me of the used, but with like a little bit more of a fresh amount of life to them. I would highly recommend checking them out. Hey, so I just want to take a really quick second to say thank you to the folks over at Gigabyte for loaning me this 16 inch uh, 13 620 40 60 gaming laptop. Uh, all of the video that you are seeing is being edited via this laptop. I brought it with me to San Antonio. They were kind enough to let me borrow it just to take their, uh, by way of Stintsbuilt, the, uh, the PC sponsor that has been kind enough to sponsor me for the last several years. So Stints was able to hook this up for me. Um, I would not be able to do what I'm doing without these guys. This is a beast of a laptop at $1,099 on Amazon. So definitely check them out. Give them some love. Uh, thank you again to the guys at Stints. Thank you, Gigabyte. You guys are amazing. I love this thing. Um, I need one. 
Um, I want this one. Can I have it? <laughs> Seriously, really, really great piece. Thank you guys so much. Okay, so after scooping the obligatory hoodie and snapping a picture with my boy Andy, it was off to bed because range day was the next morning and I was on three hours of sleep and it was midnight and I'm old. Day two began with a relatively early rise out of bed to a text message from Velian saying a guy I never met was coming to pick me up to take me to the range. So of course, I just hopped into the Durango of a complete stranger and headed on out. Why not? All right, it's uh, day two. Turn right. We're on our way to the range. I'm here with Strongbeard. Yes, sir. Hanging out. I'm gonna go uh, I'm gonna go shoot some pew pews. We're, uh, we're pulling into uh, Hilton Garden Inn to pick up Velian and a couple other people, and we're gonna head to the range. So we'll check in later. Then it was off to the range where we saw a lot of guns and a lot of good friends. Captain. What's up, dude? Oh, no, oh my god, look at Get jammed on, baby. Get jammed on, bitches. <laughs> Are you live right now? No, I'm just recording. Yeah, we can say whatever we want. I just cut it out later. True. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't say that. Can't say that. Back. Let's go. Safety briefing. Here, y'all shoot. Let's go. Here we are. I'm with Sexual Chocolate. Sexual Chocolate. <laughs> you. <laughs> Feeling nice. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, it's a nice. video. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> I thought it was going to be a picture. I thought it was a fucking picture, dude. He didn't know it was a video. It's great. It's perfect. <laughs> Too tall. Definitely. He's, he's, able, I mean, he's got, yeah, he's I'm in a pocket. Out, it's fine. I'm a little bit down. Yeah, yeah it's good. He's got he's, he's, yeah, like six foot. Yeah. Six foot. Six foot. Six foot. Six foot. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the gun range and how it's set up, there are two 40-foot berms set up along the property, kind of shaped like a McDonald's M. Um, double the size of the first gun range get-together, now there was a second berm. On the left, the first berm was uh, a bunch of fixed placement machine guns, 50 cals, M2 Brownings, several miniguns, and various other odds and ends. And this was bookmarked on this end by uh, a couple tables of really interesting stuff. There was a minigun with a suppressor, a custom-made fabricated suppressor, custom-made by the folks that set it up, who also brought along the world's only internally suppressed Tavor, several scars, one really decked out scar, H, and a 7.5-inch barrel 5.56 short boy scar that never really left the gun rack. But I got some good footage of the suppressed minigun, especially one time in particular where Matt Carricker let it rip. I am, I am so glad I'm not Canadian right I now. I want royalties for that. Yeah, I want that was royalties. the all E. That's all him. Now on the right, uh, on the on the other set, the other berm, were all the smaller arms. And I say smaller arms, but there was still like larger stuff. There was a Serbu BFG 50, which I shot last time I was here, and several other larger firearms. But there was also this absolutely perfectly gassed AR-15 made by Bear Arms. And if you're unfamiliar with Bear Arms, that's Asian Phil from Grand Thumb's stress test video. As well as this baddie daddy 458 SOCOM, when shot in full auto, was a absolute beast that kicked like a goddamn mule. On this side, though, this side was where the cool stuff Stuff was this one was bookmarked by a Tesla S that is approximated to be worth around six hundred thousand dollars. That would be due to the minigun mounted on the hood of it. Uh, yes, it's real. Yes, it fires, and yes, this thing absolutely screamed. They ended up doing a test fire and two live fires, the test fire being done with blanks, and you could see and you could really feel the difference between the test run and the live run. Uh, you can see it just in the recoil of the uh, of the actual minigun itself. The concussion that came off of the minigun when you were on alongside of it during live fire tests. Yeah, you could just you could feel the power, <laughs> the, the difference in it. And the day ended with everyone lining up along these tables, locked and loaded, and absolutely unloading on a series of ballistic dummies that got set up. The closest of which was shredded completely in half by the minigun mounted on the Tesla. What a time. Honestly, uh, for the end of this, I couldn't even think of a natural way to introduce this last section, so I'm just going to let Velian kick this bit off. Hey, Donut, oh, do you, do, can I take this okay? home with me, please? 
Can I take this home with me? Yes. Uh, really? 100%. Are you serious? Yes. I fucking love you. <laughs> I'm literally gonna put it on my shirt. <laughs> so if I walk through TSA with this, I don't know. Fuck! Wait, wait, because you can't carry what? Three ounces? Three ounces, they won't let you through. Fuck! Yeah, yeah. definitely not. Yeah. It's, their way. it's gonna have to go in a checked bag. <laughs> yes. So your impressions of the range day? <laughs> it was a good day. I am burned as a motherfucker. Same. It was a good Same. day. Yeah. 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 That was a good day. Thank you for coming to my range day. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my range day, guys. <laughs> You're gonna UPS that. I'm gonna. I'm taking this. I'm gonna UPS this. I'm gonna put it in my stream room, and that's where it's gonna fucking stay. Okay. Uh, so I can't kick it. He's mailing. No. He's mailing a ballistic so gel scale to himself. Oh. Yeah. The rest of the trip was spent alongside Velian, Ben Jammins, Sweet Divinity, Big E, Curiosity Kills, General Sam, Strongbeard, who you met from that first little reel, and others as we traversed the downtown area of San Antonio, taking in the food, the music, and the sights. <laughs> and there were a lot of sights to be had. Friday, day three, was... Uh, Good Friday, as we're walking into the courtyard of the cathedral, there was a cross, giant cross, laying on the ground with a small platform on it as they were preparing to do a complete reenactment of the crucifixion. We ended up getting about a half a block away from there. There was a procession of thousands of people following behind someone as they drug a cross uh, behind them uh, as the it reenacting the procession of Christ up to where he was to be crucified. Very, very cool, very interesting to see. Uh, I'm not a very religious person. I grew up pretty religious, but now in, in this point in my life, I'm not a very religious guy. But I could feel the amount of uh, devotion that people had to their faith, and it, it was palpable. It was very, very, very cool to uh, to witness that as, as people worked their way through the streets. The rest of day three was spent just exploring the city, taking in the sights, seeing things that there were to see, getting some good food, checking out the shops. I ended up buying a small stuffed armadillo for my, my three-year-old back home. And honestly, the best part about this trip was just being able to see all of the people that I've grown to call my friends over the years that have been a content creator. For example, Leon Lush, uh, he ended up attending, and the last time I saw Leon was back in 2020 at PAX East in Boston, my first ever convention. Since that time, we've both grown, and it was just great to be able to reconnect with people like him and others in a setting that was just about enjoying each other's company while burning some gunpowder. The bro hugs, you know? They're kind of everything nowadays. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to say uh, a very heartfelt thank you to the folks over at the gun range, uh, Matt, Cody, and Brandon. Uh, they have been extremely kind in inviting me along to these things because I'm not a I'm not a gun YouTuber. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a big gun guy. I actually I don't even own a firearm. I shot a lot when I was a kid. My family has a ton of them, but it's not something that I've really done myself due to financial means or otherwise for the last 20 years or so. I'm I'm somebody that got to know them through playing Escape from Tarkov, and by playing video games with them, I've been kind of ushered in as one of them and been able to get included for this kind of stuff and make cool content ab around these kinds of things. And I mean, I love guns. It's just, you know, I'm not, I'm not somebody that's like super into it. I'm a novice. So being able to be included in that just, just feels really cool. I, I really, really enjoy it. Um, so I just wanted to say a, a really big thank you to those guys for including me. Uh, I look very forward to being able to attend the next one. I hope you guys ended up enjoying this and uh, thanks. Yeah. Um, if you enjoyed the content, please consider subbing the channel. That would be really cool. Thank you so much for coming and checking out the video. I know that this is not normal for stuff that I typically generate, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I will see you in the next one, okay? Thanks so much. Peace.